Cooler Master has an 1100 watt SFX platinum power supply, what? SFX, not even SFXL, a tiny small form factor power supply that stretches the limits of the North American power circuit at 14 amps input, yeah. Okay, let's unbox it and take a closer look. <laughs> instances where Cooler Master absolutely hits it out of the park. Before we get to the power supply, it's also the NR200. Okay, so this is the version of the NR200 that comes with a 280 millimeter AIO already fitted to the top and an 850 watt power supply. Our particular one here is outfitted with the uh, ITX Phantom Gaming ASRock motherboard that I reviewed previously. Be sure to check out that video. This is easy mode for building a small form factor machine. I mean, it's cool to look at all the people that are building fun things with like the Dan case or really small custom loops or heck, I even put a custom loop in another one of these. This is my second NR200. I liked it so much, I bought one. Cooler Master sent me one and I bought another one. It's fun times. These are incredible machines for small form factor building because you've got two, two and a half inch drives. You can break those out. You can even fit U.2 drives in the front and use a U.2 to M.2 adapter as I have done repeatedly in several of my videos. It's lacking USB-C is the only complaint that I have. It's modular if you want a mesh side panel, if you want a solid side panel, whatever, it doesn't matter. This one that comes with everything also comes with a vertical GPU riser so you can mount your GPU vertically. That does actually make it a little easier to fit these gargantuan GPUs. The other one that I have that was just the, the regular case, you'd be hard pressed to fit these three and a half slot cards in that physical case. As always, when you're doing a build, check out a build guide or make sure that your, your parts actually fit. But in terms of, you know, small form factor builds, easy mode, the NR200 should be at the top of your list when you're looking for those kinds of things. Similarly, if you're doing a small form factor build, it can be tough to find an SFX power supply. Not F SFXL, but SFX. SFXL is a longer variant. It's physically a little bigger. That's not what this is. Sometimes also power efficiency suffers. And what that means is that the power supply will contribute more heat to your overall build, which is undesirable. A lot of the time in these small form factor cases, the power supply is not separated in terms of venting. Like a desktop case is. If you've ever looked closely at a desktop case, it's got a vent in the bottom, it's gonna pull air in from the bottom and exhaust air out the back for the power supply. The power supply has its own air duct in a lot of cases. Small form factor builds, not like that. Cooler Master's own cases, not like that. In our case, you specifically should look at the power efficiency curve because it is most efficient on a 220 volt circuit. <laughs> yes, you could run your computer off of your dryer outlet if you really wanted to, although you shouldn't because that outlet doesn't trip the breaker until you go past like 20 or 30 amps and you really would be wanting to use this on a uh, 220 volt 20 amp circuit, I think, which is okay for North America. Like you can have those 220 volt plugs and it's fine. It doesn't look like a dryer plug, but this is not the electrician channel. Let's not, let's not do that. So this comes with a 92 millimeter fan that's built in and it is a very, very quiet fan. The typical efficiency is greater than 92% under a typical load, although it does get just a hair under 94% if you do use a 230 volt circuit. If you, if you use a 230 volt circuit, it's a little more power efficient. The 12 volt power rail is just under 1100 amps by itself. You want to run a 600 watt 4090 along with an overclocked 400 watt Intel CPU. This is the only SFX power supply that can do it. At least it was when I got it. I've had it for a little while. It's taking me a little bit to make a video. This also does have a PCIe 5 style connector. It's modular. Let's take a look. Look at that. It comes with a guide that you should read in terms of cable placement. You don't want your cables going in at weird angles because that'll put stress on the connector and it will fatigue because there's a lot of power moving in and out, especially with the small 12 volt connector that you see on, on current generation or 4000 series NVIDIA cards from NVIDIA. Not every AIB partner uses the smaller connector, the smaller 12 pin connector, but uh, we're probably going to see that more and more going forward. So read the guide on making sure that the cable is not uh, bound in a particular way to be problematic. Okay, so Cooler Master cheated a little bit. The connectors protrude from the edge, but it is fully modular. Look at that. 
We have the 12VH power connector, the 8-pin CPU and PCIe power connectors, and then three 6-pin SATA slash peripheral cable connectors. In the cloth bag, you've got your really heavy power cord. Don't be tempted to reuse an existing power cord when you're playing around with building a, a kilowatt computer because those older power cords are maybe only rated for like five, six and a half amps. And if you're going to fully load your system, you're going to need a beefier power cord. Now check out this really awesome thing. Depending on what you're doing for your small form factor build, the uh, 12 volt power connector can stick out a fair bit. But look, Cooler Master bundles a 600 watt right angle cable. That takes a significant chunk of the cost out of a build, potentially. Because, I mean, even like the Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic, uh, it's problematic getting the power connector for the Zotac 4090 that we've reviewed previously to fit in that case because the cable sticks out significantly. Conversely, if you have enough room, you could use this end of it on your power supply, and that works fine. And it almost not quite doesn't block the motherboard connector. Not recommended, but maybe it would work in a pinch. Much better to use it as intended. Now because it is modular, you can order your own custom cables, of course, depending on what you're looking for for your build, but these are nice lengthy cables. Also, if you're thinking about using these for an off-label build, uh, like a server build or something like that, this cable bundle does include dual 8-pin power connectors for your CPU, so you could build a 2U rack mount storage server based around this power supply in a custom case. One kilowatt, it's a pretty good option, really. Now, in addition to the NVIDIA-style style power connectors, you also have three 8-pin PCIe power connectors. You have one Molex cable and two SATA peripheral cables, so four Molex peripherals plus an ungodly number of SATA connections and then your dual 8-pin power connections for your CPU. And then, of course, your motherboard connector. And that's what you get in that bundle. I mean, that's pretty standard fare for a power supply. Also in the box bundle is this adapter bracket that will adapt this small form factor power supply into a larger size. I have sometimes used this kind of a power supply in a desktop build where I was stuffing lots of three and a half inch drives in the bottom of the case. Think like some of the fractal tower cases where you've got room for a long power supply or drive bays, but even if you put a regular size power supply in there, the modular cables kind of crowd everything out. Use this bracket and mount an SFX power supply in that case, and then you've got miles and miles of room around your power supply. It's nice. There's also screws and some zip ties and Velcro ties in the, in the bag. It's a pretty standard accessory bundle. Now the build that I need this for that's coming up, not quite out yet. So we will be seeing this again. I'm not so sure that it's going to be a lot different than the uh, 12th gen custom loop build that I did in that NR200 with probably another Intel CPU that probably uses even more power with an even more power hungry GPU all still in an NR200, but that build is coming up. So you'll have to stay tuned for that, get subscribed, like, comment, whatever. If you wanna see me do a server build or something like that with this, uh, let me know, comment below. I'm Wendell, this is Level One, I'm signing out. This has been a quick look at the V1100 SFX Platinum power supply from Cooler Master. Hey, Cooler Master really hits it out of the park sometimes, like the NR200, and I think this V11 SFX power supply is gonna be another one of those where it's just like, wow, Cooler Master really knows what they're doing. Holy crap, look at this. 1100 watts in this. Nice. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.